Hello and welcome to Evening Morning Guitars. Uh, it is the evening and as you can see we're in slightly unfamiliar surroundings here. Um, it's mainly because dragging the Fender Twin around uh, upstairs is kind of hassle um, and since I've got the house to myself today um, I thought I'd put it in the living room. Although uh, in my ongoing um, checklist of things I've forgotten to bring back from the practice space, I forgot to bring back a splitter um, so we've had to improvise using the space station and I forgot to bring back uh, mic holders or anything. So after checking everything worked through the Fender Twin and getting quite a good sound, I realized I couldn't actually mic it up. Um, so <laughs> we're gonna go. So I dragged the box downstairs, uh, uh, from upstairs the, um, the DI box, and we're just gonna uh, use an amp sim after all. But it looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Let's be honest. But yeah, so today's video is about, in case you can't guess from the title, um, using delays in parallel. Uh, so, there was already a video on here with stacking delays, um, although it ended up being kind of more about rhythmic delays because it, it, they just happened to fall in quite a rhythmic pattern. Um, but something that seems to come up on forums a lot, um, just as a kind of general advice I end up giving people um, when they're describing a particular type of delay that they would like to get, um, is uh, actually parallel delays rather than stack delays or um, any other way you could you could you know skin the, the delay cat if you will. Um, the reason for using parallel delays, i.e., two channels that have completely separate signal paths going into two amps, um, is that both retain a lot of clarity um, and the character of the delay. If you have like a digital delay or a reverse delay and an analog delay, um, they're still very distinct in their own character, being either an analog delay or a digital delay or a reverse delay or. Um, you know, lo-fi delay, you know, there, there are a zillion different delay pedals out there and rack units and things and they all have a different character and the great thing about having two of them um, and keeping their signal path just that one delay is that you feel, uh, you definitely hear the, uh, the difference between two of them and then the way you mix that matters um, so what you can do is push them both into the centre and you get kind of more of a washy sound that's more akin to uh, a stacked delay sound. Although obviously without cascading one to the other, you're not vastly multiplying the number of repeats. So they still tail off in quite a short space of time, well, assuming you've set the delay quite short, which means you can actually play you know, quite complicated riffs and you still sort of get the clarity of the original notes. It certainly doesn't feel like you're using as much delay as you are. Um, and then obviously, and, and this is I think what I'll end up doing for this video, is you can pan them quite widely apart. And that has, well, it sort of has the effect of a quite a wide psychedelic stereo sound. And in particular, this has come up most recently in a discussion of The Verve's first album. Now a lot of people know The Verve uh, because of songs like uh, Bittersweet Symphony, which doesn't actually, I mean, there is actually quite a lot of guitar on that track, although it's not immediately apparent on the record. Um, but you know, a lot of people also know ballads and things like The Drugs Don't Work, which I don't have much time for, Lucky Man, which I don't have much time for, um, and a lot of the Richard Ashcroft pen material by the later Verve uh, on you know albums like, um, what's it called, Urban Hymns, uh, Northern Soul, that kind of thing. Uh, and But you know, to think of the Verve that way is to make a mistake because the first Verve album, A Storm in Heaven, and maybe I'll put a album cover up somewhere here, um, is this insane piece of mind-bending guitar work and it's largely written by Nick McCabe, the guitarist of The Verve um, and it's just, uh, I mean, a lot of people say that it's not that brilliant or it's, uh, you know, it's very heavily in debt to the Stone Roses and there's lots of other criticisms come the way of this album but I think, you know, if you know and if you've listened to the Stone Roses in depth, there's something about Nick McCabe's guitar work that is just completely unlike. Um, you know, I certainly don't have a decent reference point for where he's coming from with it, um, but it is just it's very very off the wall, um, and he heavily heavily uses the idea of parallel delays. Um, at the time, I believe he's using two uh, two echo units into two amps. One of them was a Roland Jazz Chorus, I think. Um, and there's there's actually some really good articles on this subject by Studio Text and things from the time, so I'll post one in the comments or something. But um, effectively, a lot of the sound he was getting was just stereo delays and flanges or phasers, uh, depending on which track we're talking about. Um, and but but they're not stereo delays in that there's one pedal in stereo. It's stereo delays in that there's two separate signal paths in parallel, and it's a very very powerful trick. So anyway, that's enough talking. That's enough background. Let's get into the playing and show you what this trick can do.
Okay, so that was a uh, stack delay sound. Um, as you can hear, uh, you know, it. It is distinct in character, the, the fact that it tails off, in this case I've not set the feedback to be too long, it's not that short either, but um, you know, it's not going to tip into auto oscillation, it's not going to become too overpowering, it makes it, um, I don't know, it, it is just to me uh, uh, in a lot of ways a lot more useful as an effect than uh, the busyness you can get with stack delays, whilst at the same time it is actually quite you know, there's a lot going on and it's quite overwhelming. And like I say, you know, if you want to hear this used um, by a much more talented uh, guitar player to great effect, then do check out the first Verve album, The Storm in Heaven. And apart from that, like, you know, there's not much more, more to say about this. At the end of the day, we've just got a, a Behringer DD400, very cheap pedal, a Donna Yellow 4, very cheap pedal again. We're talking uh, 50 pounds worth of pedals there. So whatever that is, 60, 70 dollars worth of pedals. Um, uh, admittedly, getting a decent AP box a bit harder. In this case, I've used uh, a Digitech Space Station. You could use a Whammy pedal, or there's a number of different units on the market. You could use a stereo, a cheap stereo pedal, um, and then take those two outputs and uh, do stuff with them later. Uh, in, you, know, you might not even use that stereo pedal for its intended effect, you could just use it as a splitter. Uh, and there's some tone purists that I, I can already hear their teeth grinding about that. But you know what, if it sounds good, if it works for you, it doesn't really, really matter all that much. Um, you know, make do with cheap gear until it matters to you enough to buy the expensive stuff is always the best strategy. Look, if you want, if you want a cool parallel delay sound tomorrow and the only way you can get it is by splitting stuff using a pedal, you know, then by all means do that rather than, you know, save up and wait for an AB box that means you can't buy one of the delay pedals now or something like that. Anyway, this has been Evening Morning Guitars. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, do subscribe for more. If there's anything else uh, you can think of, uh, you know, tip-wise or related to this that you want to see, then, uh, you know, leave a comment. And apart from that, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.